right, hello and welcome to the Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Adam Hempenstall, all the way from Brighton on the coast of England. How are you doing, Adam? I'm very well. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. And Adam is the CEO of Better Proposals, and he has he has, he started his first web design business at 14, has written uh, four books and, and an international movement around Better Proposals. And we thought we'd talk about proposal trends today because, you know, let's face it, Adam, in most companies, and certainly in my experience uh, over the years, uh, proposals are kind of an afterthought. Mm. They are. And I think... Uh... A lot of the reason for that is that they're such a pain to write. Um, you know, there's, there's nothing particularly enjoyable about writing proposals, sitting down, thinking about all the different things. What should you include? You know, some of us are born writers. Some of us aren't. Some of us try and learn the skill of writing. And, you know, a, a lot of people don't. And it's a writing game, you know. But you, there's lots of things you can do to make that easier. Uh, it's just not something that's, um, you know, it's just not something that's spoken about very often. Yeah. So, I mean, how how important are proposals? I mean, obviously, it's important to get down, you know, what you what you are proposing and get it to the person. But I don't think it, people generally don't look at it as a, as a strategic document or or something that has a, a power in itself. As you say, they look at it as something that, well, I need to get this done. So, hey, Adam, can you send me that proposal you did for ABC Company, and then I'll just do a you know a find and replace, and away we go. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, I, I don't know why it doesn't get given sort of the weight that it does, really. Um, but if you think about it, it's, in most cases, it's the one thing that's going to stop you from getting a, a job or a project or, or, or a deal. It, it is the, you know, it, it's, if you do it good, you're getting it. If you do it bad, you're not. And it's, it, that is where it sits in the, um, you know, in the sales process. So it's the first time they can sort of say, actually, that's not right, that's not for us, no, we're not going to go ahead, or yes, we will. So I don't think it really gets given that level of importance. And I don't really know why, to be honest with you. I think it's something that's, I think, you know, certainly from a sales point of view, it's um, it's very much, you know, just keep hitting the phones, get the yes on the phone, or whatever. But when you present somebody with a proposal, you're presenting them with something to say yes to. And I think... So unless you're a really, really, really good, I don't like the word, but closer, and yeah. you, you have just mastered that art, sometimes it's very difficult to actually get a very solid yes from people. Whereas when you present them with a proposal, they've got all of the facts. And when they do sign, it becomes legally binding and you can move forward with the project. So the next thing that it does is, of course, it you know, you have the entire project down. It's the what we're going to do for you part. That's all detailed out there. So it, especially if you're like, you're freelancing or you're sort of a smaller business or whatever, that's your project. You know, you're working from that and it almost becomes your to-do right. list, what you're going to do for that person. So uh, so you started the company Better Proposals. Um, what prompted you to do that? Because obviously you figured out that there was a better way of doing this, right? Hence the name. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I wish I'd come up with a slightly more creative name back then. <laughs> it sort of took off on what, what we're supposed to do about it now. But um, no, we started it because I, I'm i sort of quite an introvert, I'm autistic. So people skills and sitting in sales meetings and phone calls was never my thing. So, you know, having Asperger's, I was always like, oh, okay, like it's trying to hack our way around this. And mm -hmm. what I found was that if I spent more time getting the proposal right, I could overcome some of the natural shortfalls or shortcomings I had um, in other parts of the sales process. So whereas some people would be happy to hit the phone 20, 30 times to get through to somebody, I was never going to do that. Whereas right. if I sent a really, really good proposal and they sent a terrible proposal, I could edge my way ahead. So that was my approach and always had been from, like you say, from um, you know the real early days, you know, when I was 14 years old, trying to sell, you know, 30 pound websites <laughs> um but that was that was my game so we got to a point where we were spending a lot of time doing proposals for um sort of big software projects mm -hmm. and it really mattered whether you got the job or not because they're sort of 50 60 70 grand projects so we thought, well if we get this right we're onto a winner whereas you know so we really just doubled down focused on that realized how much of a pain it was to do a really good one and started then sort of thinking okay how can we start making this easier 
Um, and that was, that was sort of how the idea was born. And we just got to a point where people were buying our product because they wanted right. this internal tool bolted on to their, to their CRM or whatever it was that we were building them. We're like, oh, hang on a minute. The only reason we're selling this CRM system and this project management system is because people want the proposal thing. Why don't right. we just sell the proposal thing by itself? So that started a whole new project and a whole new, a whole yeah. new uh, cycle of life, really. So what are, what are the, some of the key differences between a really good proposal and an average or terrible one? Well, I'll give you a couple of surefire wins um, and colossal failures and if you get it wrong. Uh, the introduction. It's, I feel like I've spent the last five years just telling people this, but the introduction is the most important thing. So the introduction or executive summary or overview, whatever, it, basically whatever the first sort of meaningful paragraph of your proposal is, that is the part that is essentially set in the frame for the rest of it. So that needs to do the same job as a newspaper headline. So you need to have a good headline in there, old school marketing tricks, good headline, good subhead, and then compelling copy. And that's exactly what it is. The problem is no one ever thinks about it like that. So you end up with this, you know, about us section at the beginning and all that stuff. So it's all got to be about them. Good discovery and, you know, good, good discovery work will literally do this for you. Um, but get this bit wrong and it's a real uphill struggle from there, but get it right and everything else flows beautifully. Um, the other thing I would say is making sure there's a really, really solid call to action there. And most of the time the call to action is sign it, yeah. <laughs> become a client. You know, it, it's amazing how many people don't actually bother to <laughs> just explain what the next step is. Yeah. Um, and the last thing, and we know this from, um, uh, countless reports that we've run over the years, we do an annual report every year with sort of real data to, to analyze this stuff. And what we found is that proposals that were sent within a 24 hour period compared to just three to four days, which is perfectly reasonable by most people's standards, converts 25% better by sending it within 24 hours. So the game then becomes, well, okay, how can I get my proposals done within 24 hours? And then this is where we go. Hey. <laughs> Yeah. So it's kind of, yeah, so it's kind of interesting because, uh, as you said, I mean, if, if you say to somebody or they say, oh, I'm going to send you a proposal or you say, OK, send me a proposal. There is that thing that you, <clears throat> if you're if you're waiting a few days, you're oh, that's funny. I thought I asked for the proposal or whatever, but it definitely has an impact on you. Right. That uh, it lessens your enthusiasm for that proposal that maybe you had initially. Well, yeah, I mean, if you think about the last, you know, both yourself and anybody that's listening to this, think about the last sales meeting you were in and the bit where there's somebody says to you at the end, great, okay, so you're shaking hands and they say, okay, brilliant, well, we'll get a proposal over to you then. That is the most excited that they are ever going to be about that project. Yeah. Every hour that goes past after that, and certainly every day or every week, it is diminishing rapidly. So the sooner you can get that potential yes in front of them or give them something to say yes to in front of them, you know, the better off that you'll be. So whatever you can do to speed that up is, you know, it's worth its weight in gold. Yeah. And then sometimes there's a reluctance to send a proposal. You know, people kind of think, well, I don't want to send a proposal too early in the process, be too presumptuous or whatever. I mean, what's your, what, what do you say to that? Great question. Um, I did send it when you're ready is the, is, or when you've got the information. If you, mm -hmm. If you, I don't know, I say I contact you and say, okay, I've got this great service and you're like, great, send me a proposal. If I'm like, uh, okay, yeah, all right, brilliant, I'll send you a proposal. That's completely wrong and, and fundamentally a complete waste of time. But it's a yeah. common response. It's just like, okay, well, send me a proposal. What you, what you really mean is, okay, well, send me something to entice me to have a meeting with you or to entice me to have a phone call with you. But that's not what people end up doing because they're just simply using the wrong word. So... What you really should do if you're in a situation like that is go, okay, well, so I can do that. Mm -hmm. Let's have a quick 15 minute phone call, so hash out some basics and just see if there's anything there. If there is, more than happy to do that and we can take it further. If not, no worries, it's only 15 minutes, but it's probably worth that. No one's gonna say no to that. If, there, if there's even a slight interest there, anyone can spare 15, 20 minutes. So you don't want to be sending proposals without having done whatever your version of the discovery actually is. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so so the, the, talking about uh, trends around proposals. So from a from a buyer's point of view, obviously you know you do a lot of research. 
What, what are some of the trends that are emerging in, in how we like to get proposals and what we like to see in proposals and what you know, gets, us, gets us excited about one proposal over another? Well, I think one is the format. And I think that's definitely very understated. So at the moment, I would say that there's two real ways to send a proposal. The first is by um, making it as a PDF and sending it, which obviously you can do in a number of different ways. The second is doing it in a web-based format, which is where a proposal sits. Now, yeah. you can still, of course, do the PDF export if people still require that, and that's fine. Um, but it's that, about that first impression. So when you're sending this proposal to them, what is the first impression they're getting from you? So if you're selling anything that's like technological, for instance, and you send them an old school PDF, I mean, this, this, the funniest example is people that sell websites and marketing services, and there's going on about how it's important to be, you know, sell responsive this and, you know, be, be super quick and whatever. And then they send some old school PDF document that, is 45 meg, they can't download it on a phone, you're pinching and zooming your way through this thing trying to read it, and you're like, these, these guys are selling me some te technological marketing solution and I'm having to, to pinch and yeah. zoom my way through this thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the first thing is, is the format really. And I think when you get the format right, a lot of other things automatically self-correct. So you can use things like video in your proposals, which we're seeing a massive, um, you know, real response to. So one of the things we've looked at in the um, in our proposal reports is what the effect of including a video is. And that's kind of interesting. So, you know, generally you're going to have a higher conversion rate if you include video. No, of course, mm -hmm. if you include bad video, that's not going to help you very much. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, and what, is, what, is, what is good video? Is it just the, uh, I mean, if I'm a salesperson, is it just a couple of moments of me recapping something or, or what, what is it? That yeah, that could work really well. I mean, there's a couple of things that work really, really well and are surefire successes. Um, one is either sort of a before and after video or a case study video. That stuff is gold. Testimonial videos, similar sort of thing. Again, absolutely brilliant. Um, the other thing that's worked really, really well is a personal introduction video. So if you're quite comfortable on camera and you're confident, um, this can work really, really well in your favor. So setting up the camera, it doesn't have to be fancy lighting or anything sure. like that, but just you can even sort of shoot a selfie style if you like, but it's a really nice sort of personal connection. Um, so it can either remind them of that meeting that you had. It's, it's more personal. And especially these days where a lot of people are doing more and more over email and over, you know, even just sort of Facebook Messenger and everything else, the human element's going. So to be able to sort of remind them that you're a human, you're in an office, you're a functioning business, you know how to dress, all this kind of stuff, it all helps add to your sort of overall credibility. Um, and to then just sort of shoot that in sort of, a, you know, a, even just a 30 or 40 second thing, mm. just sort of reminding them who you are, giving them a little bit of personality, thanking them for the opportunity, whatever it is, reminding them about the benefits that they're going to receive from buying your thing or whatever that is, keeping it to a sort of 30, 40 seconds, get in, get out, and get it sort of early on in the proposal, massive difference. Right. Yeah, and then that's interesting, obviously, because as you say, you're personalizing something that is generally, I mean, fairly impersonal, right? A proposal is a fairly impersonal mm -hmm. thing. So actually humanizing and personalizing it uh, is going to have a big impact. Yeah, massively. And uh, that, that's exactly it. And it's, it's trying to bring that in wherever you can in a way that's not completely annoying so like back in the day you'd have to sort of get your camera out you need an editor you, all this stuff it's too difficult too complicated whereas now you can shoot it on your phone you can upload to um to youtube within a, in a matter of minutes set it to unlisted paste it into better proposals or any other sort of similar system and off you go that's it you've got a video literally on your you know in your um in your proposal and that's going to make a huge difference when you when you send this thing to somebody and they open it up and they're like wow this is you know this is this is yeah, and, and and probably say, wow, this is different in a good way. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's that's it. It's different. And you know, the um the, the PDF example is something that's kind of interesting. It keeps sort of coming back and it's like, yeah, but people like PDFs. It's like, do they though? Do they actually like a PDF or do they like consuming content or you know, consuming something that's important to them or their business or whatever in a way that makes sense to them? So when you're opening up a, a PDF and you can't read it on your phone and it's too small on an iPad 
and it's all just very difficult. That's not nice, is it? No one likes receiving something that's annoying or an inconvenience. What people like is going, oh, this is cool. Yeah, I can read it. I'm on a train. Absolutely fine. I can get the gist of this. I, you know, that sort of stuff is, is easy. And you know, when you use a web-based platform, at least some of them anyway, I mean, certainly in the case of better proposals, mm. um, it, all that stuff is handled. So when you send something to somebody using our platform, for example, it's all responsive. So in the same way that a website would be these days, your proposal yep. does the same thing. So it just means that it, people can consume this stuff in a way that makes sense to them and is how they want to do it, rather than forcing them into doing it in some old school way, just because you've assumed that somebody wants to read this on uh, a uh, piece of paper for some reason. Yeah, and again, I mean, it's nice. I mean, you've differentiated yourself. And also, I guess, how, how cool is it if somebody then shows somebody and say, oh, look, at this is a proposal I got. This is really cool the way they did that, right? I mean, this is, again, now you're now you're getting the extra marketing benefit of doing it that way. Well, it's yes, the proposal is cool in itself, but it's it actually says what kind of company does yeah. stuff like this. You know, it's mm. like it's actually it actually wins on two levels. So yeah. one is like, okay, it's a nice proposal in and of itself. And then there's the well, what other cool stuff do they do? What other, you know, if this is the kind of care and attention that they take over literally sending over what is essentially a quote, what mm. other stuff do they do that's really cool? So it just positions you that much higher. And there's other little things that can go into this as well. So when you're sitting there thinking, oh, is this, you know, should I send the price for, for two grand or three grand? I don't know. When you're sending stuff in like a really quality way and it positions you up here, you can put that slightly higher price in there and you can get over that over that sort of mental pricing hump, so to speak. We all have it, you know, everyone's got a number that they can't pitch past, you know. And it, it, it's that kind of thing. It will help you get past that because you know you're presenting something that's really quality. Yeah, absolutely. So what are, what are another couple of trends you see before we uh, finish up today? Um, well, sending sending web based is is a massive one. So we we pretty much covered that. I mean, keeping it um, keeping things bite sized is is something I'm seeing a lot that's working really really well. So instead of having pages and pages and pages of documents and all all these heavy worded things, you're it's almost like mini articles. You know, headline subhead paragraph, headline subhead paragraph. It's like hit them with points that are really cool, like punchy benefits lots of fancy imagery that sort of stuff's going down really really well so you know bring your brand in there and if it means you know spending money on a designer to sort of bring them in and say look get them involved in the project get a copywriter in to make sure that when you're writing your stock bits that are never really going to change make sure they're as good as they possibly can be you know and take up the idea of copywriting learn it. it's a skill you're going to need it um you know that, those kinds of things you're seeing that work more and more and more. Um, so that's that's definitely one thing I, I would say for sure. Um, the other thing, is, I keep hammering on about it, but sending it quickly, it's such a, it's that much of a difference maker. It's, I mean, it's it doesn't make any sense not to do it within 24 hours. No matter what anyone said, the data says, oh yeah, what did we study? Nearly a million proposals or whatever it was last year. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a huge data set or a decent size anyway. Um, and it, it's the, the results are clear to see. Um, sending sending the thing quickly makes a huge difference. Yeah, and there's also there's always that bit where if you're excited by something and you say, okay, send me the proposal, and then it doesn't come, and then you have to say, oh, I thought you were supposed to send me a proposal. My enthusiasm level is dropping dramatically. Uh, uh, every day I don't get the proposal, and then hugely when I have to ask you for it again. Yeah, if you ever get to a point where you've been chased for a proposal, you've screwed up big time. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you are running up an escalator that's going the wrong way backwards, mate. You, you are, you've gone wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, put systems in place, work towards that, you know, put systems in place where you can do that quickly and it's not a major pain. So highlight points of your proposal which are not going to change yep. and, you know, bring in... Um, and get systems in place for the things that you you are writing. So super 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 quick little tip here is you know if you are going to go and you know meet prospective customers and things like that, um, yeah you can do it if it's a decent sized deal and and you don't need to go to their offices or their place of work. Meet them somewhere really smart like a you know a decent hotel or whatever. Yeah. It puts people in a really good state for one. Get there early, get nice and relaxed, have your meeting, send them on their way, and then sit straight back down again and write that introduction part. 
Because once you've got that introduction part, everything else is so much easier. But, you know, using their words and phrases, we all know this is powerful and it's important. And describe things how they actually describe them and not rewording them. That stuff's so, so, so powerful. And you can only really do that when it's close to the time. If you try and do that in two or three days' time, it's it'll be close, but it's not going to be as, you know, as impactful as it could be. Yeah, that's fantastic, Adam. Those, those are fantastic uh, points. So before we go, I'd like you to tell people a little bit more about yourself, about your company and the services and uh, products you offer. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we've um, sort of covered a little bit in context, but uh, Better Proposals is a, is a web-based platform for making the process of writing and sending proposals quick and easy um, and getting them signed apart from anything else. Uh, so there's lots of things built in to make this easy, like digital signatures, sort of content libraries, um, you know, being able to reuse your best bits and exclude your worst bits, tracking the proposals, you can find out when they've opened it and all that kind of stuff. Um, there's also 120, 130 or templates for all sorts of different industries. So if you're kind of thinking, yeah, proposals, good point. Um, but where do I start? How do I improve that? You, there's a whole template library, which is completely free, which you can go and browse and uh, use for some inspiration. All right. Well, listen, thank you, Adam. This has been uh, fascinating. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. Uh, see you all for another expert interview really soon. And thanks again, Adam. Pleasure. Thank you.